Hey, what's up, baby? Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get almost every emulator on your 3DS using RetroArch. For a full list of emulators RetroArch can run, check the description below. Now, many of you may know RetroArch from its iOS version that, at the moment, is not working without a jailbreak, but if you have a 3DS, you can get it on there. To do this, we're going to be using a homebrewed 3DS. If your 3DS is not homebrewed and does not have tube hacks, you can learn how to get it by following my free and easy tutorial linked in the description below. Now, RetroArch runs emulators based on your 3DS hardware, therefore, a new 3DS will run emulators much better than the original 3DS you see on screen now. However, every single 3DS model does have certain emulators that it can run perfectly. Just keep in mind that the older the emulator, the better it will run. With all that being said, if you're excited to learn how to get emulators on your 3DS, please leave a like as I worked really hard to make this tutorial as clear and easy as possible. Now, without any further ado, let's head into the tutorial. Alright, like I mentioned, you will need a homebrewed 3DS with two packs, so if you have not done that yet, you can check out my tutorial linked in the description below. Nevertheless, a quick disclaimer for those of you that already have two packs and are not updated to the latest firmware as of the release of this video, which is 10.1, you can update to 10.1 and two packs will still be working. However, when you open YouTube, hold the start button until two packs crashes and then power off your Nintendo 3DS. And when you go back into two packs, it'll ask you to select your firmware again, select the correct firmware, and you'll have access to two packs and the homebrew channel again. Now that you have access to the homebrew channel, we're going to take out our SD card and put it into our computer. I'm going to be using a Mac for this, but it does also work on Windows. So go ahead and open your favorite web browser and paste in the URL the link to the RetroArch build bot. Scroll down and click on the latest build. For me, it's October 1st. So I'm going to click on that and the download will begin automatically. Once the download is done, it is a .7z file. So if you're on Mac, you will need an application from the App Store called the Unarchiver. Or if you're on Windows, you will need to use WinRAR. There will be links to those programs in the description below. Once you get the extracted RetroArch folder, you're going to open the .3ds folder and here you'll have all the cores for every emulator that RetroArch plays. Now, you can choose a specific emulator that you'd like to put into your 3DS SD card in the 3DS folder if you'd like, but if you'd want to put them all in, you can also do that as well. Once you put those into the 3DS folder, it will automatically appear in your homebrew channel once we put our SD card back into our 3DS. So before we do that, we actually have to get games for the emulators that we just got. So go back into your web browser and type in the URL doproms.com. From here, you can navigate for ROMs for the emulator that you'd like to do on the left hand side. I'm going to be using the Sega Genesis emulator for this video and you can search on the bottom or go by top ROMs at the top right hand corner. Once you choose a ROM that you'd like to download, it'll take you to the page specifically for that ROM. Go ahead and click download and then scroll down and hit download one more time. You don't have to use doproms.com, any ROM site will work as long as you get the ROM. Now. Dope ROMs gives you .zip file, so make sure you extract it. If you're on a Mac, it'll automatically extract it. So once you have the games you'd like to get, make sure to make folders for the emulators that you'd like to play them on. So I'm going to make a folder called Genesis. As you can see, I have other folders for other emulators. And in that folder, you're going to put your games. So the game I just downloaded that I have extracted, I'm going to put it into that folder. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and eject your SD card, put it right back into your 3DS and go into two packs. Once you enter two packs, you will have all of the emulators from RetroArch that you put into your SD card. They're each individual application. So like I mentioned, maybe you just want to get the Sega Genesis emulator so you can only put that folder into your 3DS folder in the SD card to save space. But as you can see, 
you have all of the emulators that RetroArch has to offer, which is way too much to sound off right now. So you can just see them on the screen now, but to actually play them, you just have to open it like any other homebrew application. Once you open it, it'll take you through a variety of colored screens and then you'll get this screen. Click on A to load content and then it'll navigate you through your 3DS SD card. So just keep clicking A until you see this area where you'll see your ROM folder. In my case, it's Genesis and you always want to click on the second ROM because for some reason it'll duplicate it and one of them will have an underscore in front. Don't use that one. Always click the second one that doesn't have an underscore in front. But as you can see, I'm now playing the Sega Genesis game that I downloaded on my Nintendo 3DS. However, like I mentioned at the start of the video, not all emulators run at full speed on the 3DS. In my case, I'm using the old 3DS, which is probably the worst 3DS to play emulators on because these emulators rely on the hardware of the 3DS. So if you have a new 3DS, definitely the Sega Genesis will run at full speed, but other emulators like the PlayStation emulator will not run at full speed. Nevertheless, you can find other emulators like the Game Boy emulator, the SNES, older consoles will run at faster speeds. Now, to open the RetroArch quick menu, all you have to do is tap on the screen and you can see a multitude of things. But if you go back by pressing B after going into the menu, you'll get to the core options. And if you press B one more time, we can get to the actual menu of RetroArch. So once you get to this screen right here, you're going to click B from the quick menu and then this will take you to the actual settings where I can show you some cool stuff. So from the menu here, you're going to go into settings and then we can go to configuration and over here you can mess with the stuff. I, I hope that you guys will go through here and look through the stuff. But one of my favorite things is that if you go to video and you scroll down to I forgot which one it was the aspect ratio you can put it to full screen if it's four by three and stretch it out to what you'd like it to be now like i mentioned you guys can go through these settings and uh put it however you like it is your setting so whatever you find best you can do however like i mentioned some of these emulators do not run at full speed i know that retroarch is working on updating the emulator so maybe if you're watching this in the future these emulators will run a bit better on your 3ds however the newer your 3ds is the better it will run with that being said you can still run some emulators at full speed on an original 3ds like mine for example the game boy color you'll see that if i load a game boy color game for example pokemon crystal it will run at full speed and you'll know if a game is running at full speed basically just by looking at at it or hearing it but if you look at the bottom screen it'll show you the fps and 60 fps is the optimal fps that you'd like to run at and as you can see the game boy one is running at 59.8 which is as close as it can be to 60 fps anyways i hope you found this video helpful if you did please leave a like and share it with a friend and let them know how they can play emulators on their 3ds and make it a console that plays more than just 3ds games